Hello, Sweet Tooth here. Hope your day is going well. Going to play Real Mist. When they redid Mist, uh, the first one, into where you could actually physically walk around, they redid all the textures, lighting effects, whatnot, made everything look a whole lot better. So, let me restart because I was just making sure it was working. Actually, your character. They uh, they fell through a fissure into a area of nothing but stars, star-like. It's like a void. The game is played through books that offer you transport to what they is called ages. You can play as classic or free roam. See, unlike the first version a long time ago, you can actually walk around and look around at things. And they did a much better job of making everything look really good. Even the clouds move. And you could set it to Classic Mist if you wanted to. Where it's a point and click like it used to be. With the new graphics. But I want to go with the free roam. So my dad really likes Mist. Uh, I used to play with him a long time ago. can actually run. It's been a very, very long time since I've actually done Mist, so I do not remember every piece of it. But I'll, like, kind of remember parts of it.
That's awkward. So if you right click, you get out of it. So, I remember the library. Remember the spaceship. The power station right there. I remember the clock tower. And I think this is called like the Island of Mist. So yeah, missed a game entirely of puzzles. It's a puzzle island that Flutters wants me to burn. That was a joke. <laughs> So he keeps saying, bring me a red page. It's kind of your goal. Either him or the brother. You can actually beat this game out, right? If you know the right code for this. Where you put in squares. That's actually the true ending. So, on the shelf in the library, there are some books that are not burned, which actually give you more information as to what's on the island. Information on what's happened and whatnot. But, I'll read that in a while. For now, I'm just going to take a guess. This is tower rotation. You rotate the tower to whatever you power up. You're supposed to power up to different locations, rotate the tower towards it, and be able to get a new clue as to what age you could unlock and then go into the age. Get a red page or a blue page. And I think there might be a yellow one? I can't remember. But there's also an indication of like uh, some kind of Hints towards the fireplace, I believe. So everything on this island is a puzzle. The nice thing is that 
in the Masterpiece Collection, before they did Real Mist, they did do an interactive guide before, so they've included that as well, from what it looks like. How that works, I'm not really sure, because it used to be like tab or the tilde key that you could bring that up. But I guess I'll have to figure it out as going along. This is the power station. So I think it says 88 to 88. Oh, power to the ship. So just regular power or power to the ship? Darn it. So if you want any indication as to how this game is, like right off the bat, it's like trying to figure this out. Okay, so first of all, we got the power to, um, just regular power, but the power to the ship is actually broken, and you need to go flip the breaker in order to mess with the power switches again. So I think regular power is on, so maybe I can open these. Could be wrong. Totally wrong. Okay. Go back up there. Okay, so I only flipped the breaker to the um, spaceship. But I didn't do the regular power, I think. Alright, so let me get all that reset. No? Okay, so... The the ship one is still messed up. Let me go reset it. 
right off the bat the power station is going to irritate you to no end. So, the first one is plus 10. So, 1 plus 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't remember how many there were, so I'll just put twelve for now. So five times two, ten. Never mind. Okay, so it's plus one, plus seven. One seven two eight. One seven two eight. That's one. That's eight. Twenty two. Sixteen. This was a 16, right? Okay. Alright, this is 19, 5, and 9. 19, 5, and 9. 5, and 9. So your goal is not to go above 100, otherwise you will blow the breaker and you need to go reset the breaker. I wonder why it's the same for both the ship and the regular power. Huh. But maybe this is just power just to the spaceship. Never mind. <clears throat> Alright, so let's see. 6 is 22 plus 7, which is 16, Eight was 19, see I have this one which is 2, so the mean I would only need 20, and this one which is 10, Not eighty eight. I thought I was bringing you up to eighty eight. What? Hmm.
Well, let's turn everything off again, I guess. There you go. Welcome to Mist. Welcome to Mist, where it will drive you crazy. <laughs> I think this is only for spaceship, to be honest. But I will get it solved. Someday. <laughs> what? Wait, do you have to flip both breakers? Ridiculous, man. That team an unlocked master electrician. Gum. The game. The gum. The gum mocks you. Like, already you're failing. <sighs> okay. It seems like sixty eight, if I go beyond it, automatically breaks. So I think the actual sign is lying. I think this is lying. It looks like 88, but it's not. So if you ever want to know what mist is like, this is what it's like. Hmm. Alright, so let me do... 6, 7, this one. That brings it up to 57, right? So I will bring it up by 1 and then the 10, which is not correct. So it doesn't like 68. What if I leave it right there and I reset it? I might have to just look at the spaceship. the other one so four and five ah, I still need ten which is funny hmm That would be plus five. Alright, that would be plus five, right? So I would need to do... But two is right here. So it doesn't even make a sense for that one.
you know what let me just mark all of them and then I will say this one and this one no that was minus one and then I'll reset the breaker and it'll be correct as to what it indicated it said 88 that is what I'm going with <laughs> Freaking liars. Yeah, see, idiot. Totally correct. That's what you said. That's what I did. Now let me in the spaceship. Set this breaker. Let me in the spaceship. Fine. Yep, this is why you go back and you read the dang books. It's your only indication. The ones that are not burned your only indication as to why things are the way they are in this place so this is the one for channel wood if I wanted to, if I wanted to get to channel wood this is the book I would read I think I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me for a short amount of time, they fell to their knees and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, suddenly, they would change from deep blue to muddy orange. Bless you. Then from muddy orange to beautifully clear, I was so intrigued by the water, I hardly noticed that we had arrived at a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to their village, which is about 10 meters above the ground, the water and can only be reached by rope ladders that stretch from the lower pass to the village level approximately halfway up the grand trees. And you actually have to pay attention to like these books and everything they say because this is exactly what the age is like and you, this is how you navigate them. It was very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. As sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of an enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. The walls were garnished with bright, bright, bright metals, and in the center of the hut sat the leader of these people. At least he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Guards surrounded the strong creature who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the leader sat a very old human, at least to some extent he appears human, His hair, which was only on his face and head, was completely gray, almost white, and hung very long around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise, this creature could speak my language. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions. 
They look to be telling me to go to sleep. I look forward to learning more. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human, but he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me ve feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble but wild. He has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me he had not spoken our tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he has told me. Many years ago, the humans and tree dwellers lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground, and the tree dwellers lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings, which happened randomly, some sort of tectonic, tectonic or volcanic action, I suspect. The sometimes slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time. Then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The rumbling began and grew quickly to unprecedented levels. Soon it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. So that whole island is sinking. The humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out. Maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I am not sure. This is a story the old man communicated to me, although many details are very unclear in my mind. I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of the story. The island must have stopped on its own. Yet the old man believes in the truth of the story as if he had been there. And the tree dwellers worship him and apparently all humans as if they were heroes or gods. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and sleep. He then said, we had expected you to come sooner. These actions filled me with a sort of immediate dread. With much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help, but he pushed me away with more, more force than I imagined his frail body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. They then kneeled before him. He walked to each and placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off of the narrow path high in the trees. The tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick up his body, up the body. He had fallen onto a lower level of walkway and carry it away. He was laying down at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of some potion, one of the tree creatures lit the pier on fire, and I watched as the flames engulfed him. As this strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. This morning, I awoke, finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events. The water is a dull green, as far as I can see now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. As I wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon so that I may learn more from them. So it's really weird. And there's actually a lot of dark tones to this game. Like really dark tones. The waters kept changing until this old man basically kind of killed himself. Let's see. Let's see if I can see where the water's mentioned. I 
I guess it just says a myriad of... No, no. It does mention the waters, though. I think it did. Yeah, I noticed that the waters below were changing colors. Now this gets kind of weird because the text changes and it you can tell that it's not exactly the same. I have lived on this world for three months off and on and the tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I am even beginning to learn bits of their language. I have decided to return home from an extended stay with my loving wife and my sons and hopefully return with them. However, I am sure Catherine will once again refuse. I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all. And I at least look forward to how Sirius and Akinar will react to its curious inhabitants. Then changes the green. Catherine is staying behind as expected. My sons have returned with me and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long until they can speak with the tree dwellers much better than myself. I am leaving tomorrow to check on Osmoian age, Sears has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay. Though the idea unsettles me, I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warned the boys not to take advantage of the respect of the tree dollars have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith they will follow it. Much to my dismay, upon arriving in Everdunes, I learned that Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the Choctic. I fear for their survival and plan on returning to her shortly after checking on Sears and Akinar here. See Everdunes Journal for more information. After watching Sears and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well, and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again and for a little longer time. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving but I am happy but are happy that Sears and Akinar are staying behind again. I have been gone for over three days and have been to many different places. I had to tell Sears and Akinar about Pran's death today and they were visibly shaken although they only remember her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Sears and Akinar to leave Channelwood for a while, and I have to agree they will be returning with me when I leave again. I have told my sons that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. It seems they constructed a boat with the creatures and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures and am reminded of my own adventures as a child. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their ain't many inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from the black I thought they were to various different colors. I have shown some of the creatures my journals and they laughed and howled. I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, as I look through this very colorful journal, I cannot help but laugh myself. We will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for the last night here. They have told me they would like to come to Channelwood again, and also asked if they can visit some other ages alone. See, these sons keep insisting on visiting ages alone. Though I will have to think over their request, I have to believe they, will, they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also have to help me decide whether they are ready for travel alone, for now I must be give my farewells for the creature to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. <clears throat> that was this one, right? Yes. 
Okay, I think this is a burned one. Let me just skim through these real quick. I'll read them later. Submersible lamp. The different kind of constellations. Which are actually very important. Anchor, eye, snake, beetle, cross, arrow, flamingo, leaf. That's a burned one. That's a burned one. It actually does remove these books as you look at them. Just to like show that you are looking through that one. There is a mention of Riven in this, the sequel to this game. Okay. So, if you haven't guessed by now, these two books belong, are like where the two sons are at the moment. Anchor eye snake. Anchor eye snake. Beetle cross arrow. Beetle cross arrow. Ba da ba 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 That's incorrect. All right, I just wanted to see it real quick. Uh, 
I'll just turn them all off. So this So if I had a month, day, year, and time, I would be able to put it in and immediately go to that constellation. Okay, so that makes sense. So I need to go like month, day, year, time, and I'd be able to make use, use of this room. Sun's actually setting? Show this too. Like, if you got one of the uh, locations powered up, the tower rotated correctly, you would be able to get further information on what you're supposed to be looking for. Because this will rotate and that'll actually show stuff. Right now it doesn't show anything. This is where you rotate the tower. So that is one thing that I need to try to remember about this game. Is how do I light up locations? I need to be able to light up locations. It might have to do with these boxes. So if that's down... Are they all down? No. Well, that was down. That one was down. Now I have it up. This one is down. Now I have it up.
I can't actually reach that one. Hmm. So, if I switch all those up, do they show on the tower rotation? I sure as heck do. That's how you do it. Hmm. There we go. So this is the basic idea. Those switches allow the markers to appear on the tower rotation. You rotate the tower. Go up to the tower. Get the further information onto all of this stuff. Mist 1 isn't as bad as Riven. Riven's actually the hardest puzzle game I've, I've encountered. I don't know if that's still true, but... <laughs> that looks awful. <laughs> Just gonna ignore that. That's weird. I don't remember in the original game that, like, the time of day changes. Huh. 240. Is that for this? So now the clock tower I can get to appear on tower rotation. Hmm. <clears throat> 
I don't know what the 221 stands for. Clock tower for the 240. I don't know what the 221 is for. And then we have more clues about different things. October 11th, 1984. 10.04 a.m. January 17th. 12.07 a.m. November 23rd 97.91 that would make any sense 6.57 p.m. bonus agent here. So there's Channel Woodstone, Ship Age, Selenitic Age, Mechanical Age, The Dunny Age, That's a weird way to save. <laughs> so does the spaceship, does that, does that, that, 
It doesn't stop on anybody else for some reason. So I've done this one, I've done this one, and done that one. So anyways, this is Real Nest. This is the first video of me doing it. And uh, I'll just keep hacking at it until I get it done. Actually, it looks really nice. A lot better than the old version.